Joe, you must have some many Irish Grand National memories. Perhaps could you could you pick out one and what, what's your outstanding Irish Grand National memory from all your years here at Ferry House? Well, I would say being here at Sea and Arkle when the Grand National, you know, as a child, that was a, a great uh, thrill. You know, it was a he was a miracle horse or a wonder horse, and to be here uh, and to see the people trying to pull hairs out of his tail walking by. Uh, but I was coming here as a child uh, in the on Easter Monday into the infield, as it was called then, and we used to come here on Easter Monday as a, for, with a picnic with my parents and all my brothers and sisters and. Outside was a big carnival event, and it was a, a real, uh, oh, unbelievable buzz about the place. And I always used to look with envy at the people inside in the enclosure and the stands, and dreamed of the day that I would get in. And then eventually I did get in, and it, you know, it was it was wonderful to, you know, to be here. And at the time, Pat Taff was in his, you know, the height of his career. And he was riding wonderful winners, and it was a marvelous thing to do to be able to come and see that. You know. And how have you seen the race and the day itself evolve over modern times? Has it become more difficult, would you say, for, for punters to pick the winner of the Irish Grand National? I wouldn't say it has become more difficult. Uh, it has always been a great indi indicator of the English Grand National. Horses that have run well in it, you know, like Bobby Joe and Papillon, uh, have uh, run uh, well in the English Grand National. Uh, the form works out well in, the, in it and... and uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a good, very, very, very competitive handicap and, and uh, uh, as I say, it throws out, it, it's a great indicator for the English Grand National. I've been working at it a long time and working at all the festivals for years now, so, you know, they're big days and you, have, you can't relax, but uh, you're not overwhelmed by it either. Um, and uh, the most important thing to me is, it's not me, it's the people that work around me. I've got a great staff, the people that work here, the Noel Fanning, the head groundsman here, and all his staff. You know, without them, I am nothing, and, uh, and without them, Ferrios is nothing either. So it's, it's not, it's not a, a, a one-man show, it's a big team effort. How would you describe the Irish Grand National trip for those who've maybe watched on telly but actually haven't come in person? What kind of a, a race is it? How is the course laid out on the day? Oh, it, it, it's, uh, it's just that it's long. You know, there are a lot of fences in the track and the fences are, are quite substantial. You know, uh, they're not as big as the Aintree fences, but they're nice stiff fences and, and it's a good challenge. Uh, uh, it depends on what the ground is like. Last year the ground was very soft uh, and uh, we had a deluge of rain uh, over the three days of the festival. Uh, this year it doesn't look as if it's going to be that fast, but we'll water it to keep the ground, you know, uh, good on the easy side of good for, for national hunt racing so that we'll have, you know, that the horses that have been racing all winter will have a chance to run and run well on it. On that note, uh, Joe, how much work needs to be done between now and Irish Grand National Day and what kind of work needs to be done? Oh well, they would have the track already now, it's only a matter of topping it and finishing off the fences. You know, the, the main work has been done about filling and levelling the ground and uh, the main thing now would be to put out the hurls uh, uh, and just keep it all uh, uh, topped, you know, the grass topped and uh, then, uh, you know, in the next week or so we'll have to decide whether we're going to water or not and then we'll have to water if, it, if needs be. Well, I don't know what your record is like as a tipster, Joe, but all the punters kind of watching in will, at this early stage, be looking for some, uh, some maybe tips on who might be the potential winners this year. The weights were announced today. Are there any trends maybe punters should follow? And what kind of horses have you seen are potential winners of the Irish Grand National? There's a horse called Armonte. Now, I'm not a good tipster and I don't bet, so I'm not supposed to bet and I don't bet, but there's a horse called Armonte. There was to run in the English Grand National and it just, uh, it, it just wasn't right on the day and they didn't run a train by Willie Mullins and it was ridden by Katie Walsh and uh, it hasn't run for a long time but bef before this it had ran up a sequence of wins and it was uh, on, the, on the up in, uh, in my opinion and uh, I think it might have a good chance.